second segment of the show for today. The uh, guest is Alana McLaughlin, and she's talking about slavery and the Holocaust as a topic this morning. And she's already given us some information relative to the introduction of slavery and some of the uh, rights uh, of the uh, owners, as well as some of the responsibilities of the slaves. And so, Lana, let's see if we can pick up and uh, talk about other aspects of the uh, institution of slavery before we get into the second part of your topic, which is the Holocaust, both demonstrating the exploitation of individuals. Go on, talk about it for me. If you just tuned in, in the first segment, I basically talked about how the slaves failed in one of the most famous slave cases, Dred Scott. Mm -hmm. Now, in the second Second segment, we're going to pick up on about ha on the end of slavery and how it all just came to a big stop. Now, towards the end of slavery, 1865, it was all those slaves had been worked to literal death, and they were uh, they were supposed to be rejoiced, and they, it was just coming up to the day where they were able to walk freely. So basically, after slavery, it was still the aftershock. I basically, um, uh, I believe people still kept slaves illegally, mm -hmm. and people still did not like African Americans for the reason that they were slaves. Mm -hmm. And from going, and this is like, this right here in this century here, mm -hmm. we're not in the aftershock of slavery, but in the aftershock of segregation. Mm -hmm. Now, I know there are still racist people out there, but it's not as bad as 1865, 1970s, etc. And now we're going to go into the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. Now, the Holocaust basically is when <laughs> Nazis believe that nobody should exist except blonde hair, pure white skin, blue eyes, no African Americans, Asians, Jews, anybody else. So basically they decided that they were going to go around and get more than six million Jews in the point of four years and kill them all because that, cause Adolf Hitler believed that because they lost the World War II, they lost, they think they lost it because of the Jews. So we're going to go into one of the most famous victims of the Holocaust, which was Annalise Anne Marie Frank. Mm -hmm. Now, Anne Frank, uh, you may know her because she actually wrote in her diary, well, her diary is out now turned into a book, The Diary of a Young Girl by Anne Frank. Mm -hmm. Now, when, when all the, the Holocaust started happening, Anne Frank say, said in her journal, her diary, that she hid in a secret annex mm -hmm. with uh, two with, a fa with family friends and another family. Now she and her uh, older elder sister Margot, her mother Edith, and her father Otto all hid in that secret annex for a few months until they were discovered and sent to concentration camps. Now the, the two sisters were sent to concentration camp. The father was sent to another concentration camp, but the mother was left behind and died of starvation. So the first dead was Anne's mother, Edith. The second dead was her sister Margot because she had typhus and the fa um, prisoners recalled seeing her fall from her bunk mm. and die from shock. Now, a few days later, Anne died from typhus because the typhus was going around the whole camp because it started with somebody and it was spreading through the camp. So the Nazis burned down the camp and Margot and Anne are buried in a mass grave somewhere and the remains are unknown. So they burned down the whole camp to stop the typhus and the only survivors were the family friends, one of Anne's school friends and one of Margot's older friends. And now when Otto got back um, to Frankfurt where the whole family was living, he f uh, he soon found out that Edith had died, but he still had hope that his daughters were alive. So he went and searched out and found out that Margot was dead and Anna was dead. So him and a few family friends went and found the diary of Anne Frank and they turned it into a book because I don't believe that her voice should have been heard should have been heard because Anne wanted to be a journalist. So that's basically how the diary of, of a young girl, Anne Frank, that's how that book came to be. Dealing more with the, the concentration camp and the uh, 
killing of more than six million Jews. What would you say to young people? And we're going to talk about this more later on during the second segment. But some of the things that you've said about it, do you think that young people ought to know information like you're talking about, about slavery and uh, the Holocaust and et cetera. But a lot of folks say that maybe uh, young children your age or uh, below really ought not to know that information. Do you think it's important that, that you know what you know in reference to these two events? Well, it basically depends on two things. If their parents think they're old enough to know such horrible things or if that or if the child thinks they're thinks they're too cool to know about their own history. So basically, if the parent thinks that the child is not mature enough to know that people were put in gas chambers and burned alive and died of typhus, a parent sh wouldn't tell a child because the child might be too young and that would traumatize them. Or the child would be like, no, nah, I'm too cool to know about my history. I don't want to know about no slaves. I don't, want, I don't care about no Jews or Holocaust or Nazis. and. It, it basically depends on what the parent and the child think about both of the subjects. And so it, 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 within that framework, you believe that uh, uh, in a real sense that both these instances represent what a uh, thing that you're big on, and that is the inhumanity of people toward inhumanity. And you think that by knowing about information like this, this can probably stop a curb the activity that people have in reference to that. In my own opinion, I think children should know about this, but the parents really have to watch out to think, is the child mature enough or does it, or is the child too mature to know about this? It basically depends on the, the view of the parent and the view of the child. Go on. Mm -hmm. And they basically think that, the, the, I've, I've seen children who think they're too cool to know about their own history, that all they care about is these new rappers, mm -hmm. Lil Wayne, think they're too cool to know about all the other ones, and just, they just think that they don't need to know about this, but when they grow up, and if they w want to become a historian, they can turn around and be like, I should have let my mom teach me about Anne Frank and Otto Frank and Harriet Tubman and Dred Scott, and they would turn around and they would think how they should have known about it, but the parent would probably regret it if they didn't tell the child in their younger years because when they get older, they'll just go away and be like, I didn't know that Anne Frank wrote a book and all that, and they would get it all wrong and be embarrassed that their parent tried to tell them something and then they refused to let their parents help. Very good. Lana, let me uh, get ready for this uh, second commercial break, after which we'll come back and I'll have you to expound on some other information that goes with these two topics, and that is this idea of bullying. And we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. <laughs> 